Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Uh, welcome back. First of all, I just want to give you a serious update about this cube and how is it going. I'm not really happy at this very moment because, you know, Reef Palooza is next Saturday and I'm very excited for that. And now I have this situation which now puts me to crap. Um, back in April, if you remember, I introduced you to Fisher's Dwarf Angel and Accor Beauty. Um, as you can see, they're no longer visible. That's because apparently they died and I didn't notice. Um, I thought they jumped out. I don't have a, a screen cover, um, but I don't see no fish around. I checked everywhere, nothing. Um, and apparently they had died in the tank, the system. And uh, then I started to have an outbreak and I knew the situation was bad because it went from cyanobacteria, actually from diatoms to cyanobacteria, and now eventually I believe I do have dino. And it's really discouraging because I've been uh, siphoning the sand, uh, the crushed coral, and everything. Um, and it'll leave for like three quarters of a day and by the end of the, uh, the light period it's back um, I'm gonna try a different method this time just not gonna do an actual water change but um, maybe siphon it into like uh, a filter sock and put back the water so try to see if it can starve the dino that way. I'm also planning on doing a three day uh, total darkness, putting cardboard around. Um, but it's a mess, and you know, I'm very excited for Rupalusa next week. And then I have all this, and as you can see, it's, it's just everywhere. The only places that it's not shown, it's where it's uh, actually no light, and um, I don't get much shadowing in this uh, with these lights. So that's even more of a problem. Um, unless it's like right underneath the corals themselves. Um, but other than that, like most of the corals do get quite a bit of uh, a light. I would say about a good 80, 85% throughout the entire um, surface. Uh, so it's not the lights. It, it, it's due to the fish and I didn't notice it that they both died on me at the same time. I do not know if they bullied each other. Um, I didn't see that. Uh, they were eating fine and I also on boom. They just gone. So based on my uh, my system's reaction with the diatoma first and then um, then the cyanobacteria and now this. Um, first I thought it was cyanobacteria to start with and it could have just went from the diatom blue straight to this or it was just all this to begin with. But that's how I noticed that my angels were missing when I saw the diatoms. Um, I had an ammonia spike and I couldn't figure out why and I'm not really paying attention about my dwarf angels. I'm not really, I wasn't really used to them. I really wasn't. Because um, I've had the rest of my fish for five years. I've well, watched six years now. So it didn't really hit me to pay attention too much of the dwarf, dwarf angel other than to make sure that they weren't nipping on my corals. And then, as you can see all the corals are fine and this and that, they really did really not nip at anything. Um, but I'm just, uh, this is very discouraging, um, but to be honest, am I really sure, is it dino? I'm not really 100%, but based on what I've seen in the past and other people who has, has it in their videos, I'm kind of identifying it as dino. It's everywhere. The whole tank actually has it, uh, unless unshaded areas. But then again, so it's cyanobacteria and, and diano uh, on diatoms. Um, they all 
you grow with the light of photosynthetic, so it kind of makes sense that it could be one of the other to the other to the other, or it could have just all started with dino. Um, other than that, there's no really change um, in terms of uh, um, my usually maintenance. Um, the patterns of what I do, the, the schedule, how I do it. Um, everything is really consistent. I really try to keep everything fine. And uh, in terms of parameters, the only thing that went down a little bit was the pH. Um, it's actually at 8.0. Um, so I think that's also a problem because on Dino, I believe they don't like high pH. Uh, so if, if the pH is low, that means I may have to raise it up and this and that to try to see if I can maybe uh, get it that way. But me, that I am not so much of a doser type guy, I don't really like to dose anything. I just like to keep on my water changes. and. I think if I keep doing water changes, it's just going to con continuously feed this dyno. And that's the reason why I think I should just, you know, cycle, uh, gravel, everything, try to get everything out, blow with a, with a turkey baster, and put it into a filter sock and put it, the system back in. Now this is the only change that I've done recently, is these veggie rounds. And I don't know if maybe the high silicon phosphate came from this which is a possibility. Um, and I bought this, and I've been using this actually before I noticed the diatoms. Now, I would uh, I would feed only one, uh, one little razor, to say, per day. It's, as it says, three times a day, but I would use one per day because the tang loves it. And I was like, okay, you know, it's based on his reaction on uh, eating it. So I was like, okay, that's pretty good. As long as he eats it, keeps him nice and fat, healthy. But um, I cannot, I cannot say enough to see if um, I, I don't have enough evidence. I really haven't done much testing. So anyway, guys, um, see if you have any tips. If you can tell me and see where I go from here. Because I really would like this tank back and running the way it was before Reefer Palooza. Alright guys, see you later. Peace.